Hello YouTubers. So uh, today I want to talk to you about the row filter um, a property of the uh, data table. And um, I think it's going to take me more time to explain the setup of the whole thing than actually implement the one line of code only that we need to make this function uh, in a very cool way. So let me just tell you what I have. Oh, by the way, uh, if you want to follow along on the description, um, right here, I think, or right there, right there on the top. So I have I, um, I have posted a link to my website where it's nothing, it's just a blank freaking website. It's been blank forever. But uh, you can pick up the database that I'm using uh, for this tutorial, so if you want to follow along, okay? You can pick it up and then attach to your SQL Server, and um, you're ready to go. You have the same data that I'm looking at. So let's get started. What I'm doing here on the form, I added two data grids, and um, on the, the top data grid, I called it the data grid vendor, and I changed two properties here. I changed the uh, user add rows to false, okay? So then we're not gonna have that one extra row at the very bottom of the uh, data grid once the data set is loaded into the data grid. And then I have also changed, what else? The read only property to true, uh, so we can't change anything. So read only to true. And that's the same for the, uh, uh, both of the data grids here. This one I call the data grid vendor, and this one I'm calling the data grid invoices, okay? Um, so that's all on the setup form, nothing more. Let me jump into the code here really quick. I've, I've added some stuff here already, and it's all the stuff that um, I showed in previous videos. So if you're not familiar with these objects, please check out the other videos, and you, I'm sure that you will understand perfectly. So let me just brush it over really quick. I, I'm creating a data set object. I'm creating two data adapters here in my connection string. That should be very clear to you guys uh, if you have watched the new videos. And then I'm creating my SQL command. Uh, a select statement for the vendors here for the vendors table I'm attaching that SQL command into the select uh, command property of the data adapter vendors and then I'm using the fill method which uses the select command and then I'm fulfilling the data set I'm calling uh, that table the uh, table vendors in the data set okay um, and then I'm doing the same thing for the invoices so I'm using uh, I'm just using a different data adapter here I'm using the data adapter uh, vendors with the select select command and I'm selecting the um, the data from the invoices uh, table and then I'm filling the data set in here so let's jump into what we're here to do today so first of all I want to show you so let's say data grid vendors dot data source it's going to equal to data set dot tables and then uh, let's call the um, for the data grid vendors we're going to use the table vendors okay this is the name that comes from um, what you named your table in the, the your data table in the data set so I chose this name is something that I came up with in SQL uh, the actual name of the table is vendors but when I load it into the data set I called it table vendors okay so that's the same name that I'm going to use down here I'm going to use table vendors to associate that into the data source so I'll show you what that means in just a second and then my another data grid the one at the bottom of the form uh, that's data grid invoices dot data source is going to equal data set dot tables and then that one I call invoices, right? Uh, table invoices, that's right. And so let's go ahead and then fire this up really quick. And then I got nothing. That's a problem. It helps if you name things correctly. There you go. So at the top, I have the uh, vendors table, and then at the bottom, I have the invoices table. And you see that right now, I'm simply bringing all the data because I did the select all statements. So I'm simply bringing all the data that I have in SQL into these two um, into these two grids, okay? That are selected are connected to the to the data set. So that's not very useful. So what I'm going to do right now is um, comment that out and then if I run the project again you can see that now I don't have any data at the uh, data grid invoices okay so um, let's go ahead and turn this up delete this and then the data grid at the top data grid there is a method here called the selection changed so let's go ahead and find that Vicky R select it was right there selection change I'm gonna double click this and then it's gonna start my selection change um, event for the top data grid for the data grid for the vendors right here data grid vendors and then in here we're gonna enter um, uh, what I wanted to show remember that when I load the form all the data 
that is in SQL for the table invoices, it's been loaded into my data set, okay? So it's there. Regardless if I'm gonna use it or not, that data is in there. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna filter that data. So I'm gonna use data set tables, um, and then I'm gonna call the table invoices dot default view dot row filter, and I'm gonna say that it's gonna equal vendor ID. Vendor ID is a column in the table invoices, okay? I'm gonna say the vendor ID equals, I'm just gonna pick a random one that I know that exists. So I'm gonna say vendor ID equals um, 123, and then I'm gonna associate that that uh, uh, um, data table to my to my uh, data grid. So invoices dot data source equals data set dot tables table invoices. Okay, and let's take a look at it right now. Let's go ahead and fire this up. So notice now that my data grid for the invoices, all I have are vendor IDs that have 123 because I implemented the filter, right? Um, so one thing that we have to do now, which is not very fun, so they're static now, so it doesn't matter. What we wanna do is actually, whenever we click on one of the vendors up, he up here, we want this to change. And so one way that we can go about doing that is change this to, let's add something else here. Um, I did this previously, so I'm just gonna copy from the side here. So data grid vendors dot current row dot cells, and then I'm gonna choose the column. So it's vendor ID dot value, okay? So what I'm, what I'm saying right here is, Whenever I select something, because selection change, so whenever the selection change on my data grid vendors, use the value, use the value, instead of 123, we're gonna use the value of the current role that we're on, okay? In the cell, it's gonna be the one that is in, um, in, co in coordination with the vendor ID column. So vendor ID column, whatever, whatever, whatever role we select, we're gonna use that value, okay? So let's see if that's gonna work. And we're gonna fire this up, and I'm gonna click. Oh, see, look, we're showing up as uh, vendor 94. So let's choose 61. 61 has no invoices. 92, 15. Let's see. Let's find one that has invoice. Oh, here we go. Vendor 99 has uh, invoice. Has one invoice here. Let's just keep going. There you go. So Blue Cross has three invoices, and then what I published that publishing company has one, and so on. Okay, so that's kind of cool, right? So we get to uh, we get to see the invoices as we change it. So um, that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to show you. Um, one another thing that we can do too is that actually, if I, I have a few minutes left, you see when we click, we it it's it's kind of weird because even though we're selecting the whole role, um, it's only picking up the cell. So one thing that we can do here, let me just copy and paste this that I looked up earlier is on the load event, we can add data grid the selection mode for full row select. So once I added this piece of code here, if we fire it up and we click anywhere in it, then we have the entire row selected. It just feels a little more professional. It just feels a little bit better, right? So if we click on Boston, then we have the whole row selected. So that's all, quick video. Um, it's just something very simple, but uh, very useful. Just stay tuned, watch the next ones, okay? Um, thank you, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.